Hi there, Celine here and welcome to my channel. Lessons for life, a mountain is my teacher. That's what I want to talk about today. And as you might guess from the title of the video, I did climb a mountain. I climbed a mountain last week and it's called Crow Patrick on the west coast of Ireland. A beautiful, beautiful location, beautiful views, beautiful scenery, everything and a beautiful experience with some lovely people. And although it was a physical challenge to climb the mountain, what surprised me or maybe just I suppose I hadn't realized it was an experience on so many levels, just not physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And it was only, I suppose, afterwards now, as I reflect on it, I just see how many reminders I was getting um, for my own life. And a lot of the, the lessons, I'm going to talk about a few of them here. It's not that they may be majorly new to you. They weren't necessarily new to me, but I needed to be reminded of them. And it reminded me of the power of nature to bring us back into our own true nature, because we are all one. We come from the same source, the same creative source. And that's a big passion for me now as I've overcome some challenges in my life to really come back into my true nature my true power because we really are such powerful creators and this experience climbing the mountain was once again reminding me of this so I'm so grateful to nature and that experience so just yeah starting off the first thing that really looking back now struck me was my whole belief system and the importance of it because as we approached the mountain um, I was a passenger in the car and it came into view. It's beautiful, magnificent. But straight away, a whole whirl of thoughts came up. And I even said it to the person, you know, out loud as well, even giving it mo more power. Oh, I, can't, I don't think I'll be able to climb it. It's so high. The last time I climbed it, I was much younger. A big litany of distances nearly to sort of save face if I can't do it. But all we're doing when we do that is we're sort of limiting ourselves before we even get started so the good thing is I recognized a lot of these things and I then said them out loud to the person I was with you know I was conscious in that experience which is key because in the previous time that I did it I was probably totally unconscious and I did it and that's fine too but I became very conscious so as we got to the car park and we parked and we met the others I sort of said to myself, you know, don't stop, you know, stop talking about you're not going to do it and you're too old and all of these things. So I did sort of rein that in and very important, you know, the beliefs that we hold about ourselves, they really are, you know, what we give energy to. If I kept saying that the whole way up, I definitely wouldn't have got to the top. And just to let you know, I did, even though it would have been fine if I didn't, but I did get to the stop top, one step at a time being the key. So we started out, I reined in my thoughts and I just got going and the group sort of split into just naturally into different groups of people going. So I was with one other lady, lovely, beautiful lady, Catherine, and um, we headed off. And the interesting thing, again, was as we started having close to the mountain, I could see the path in front of me. And the path in front of me actually looked, for the first part, very manageable. And I was like, OK, I can do this. And isn't that also another, you know, reminder about life? You know, I, I'm a firm believer in my own life. It's just we're always shown the next step. And um, when we go too far ahead, things can seem insurmountable, like me looking up the mountain. But when I focused on the steps ahead of me, it actually was fine. And up close, things are very, very different to how they appear in the distance. So it's so important to just focus on the next step and be in the now. My God, I never, ever got such, you know, uh, such reminders about just being here, here and now. Isn't it Ram Das? I think the spiritual teacher says that that be here now, the podcast call that. And that exactly, because in that, you know, 
I had no other choice than to be in the now with that experience. I couldn't jump ahead to being up at the top of the mountain. So as I said, we started climbing. And as we did in that earlier part, I started to notice a little bit of a twinge in my knee because my knee has been quite tight. But I kept going. I had my walking sticks. We were talking away. And then I noticed to get a little bit tighter. And then it was getting sore. Didn't say anything. Kept pushing through, getting sorer. And I was beginning to get a little worried. And I, it just, luckily it came to me. I stopped and thankfully being with someone else, I had the support. So how the support that we have around us is so important in our life, isn't it? I did, you know, the lady, Catherine, who was with me, very supportive, um, just listened to me when I was telling her about what was going on. And, you know, she didn't tell me one way or the other what to do. But what struck me, like with everything in our lives, we always get warning signs like I had with cancer. And I thought, OK, I can keep pushing here and I could have a bigger problem with my knee and then I won't be able to do anything. Or I can stop, just reflect a bit and see, is there anything I can do to adapt rather than just pushing, pushing, pushing? And I did. And it kept me in the moment because I couldn't look too far ahead. I just said, OK, I've got to focus on the next step. That's all I can do here. I have no idea what's coming. And we don't generally in life. We really don't know what's coming. And I really now, actually, just in saying it, believe that that acted up. And I'm glad it did because it slowed me down because I was getting very fast again, which has always been my habit in life, just pushing on through, not listening not listening to my body, you know, getting out of out of rhythm and out of harmony with my own um, body and, and energy. So what I did was I just adapted a bit. I tried it out how I was walking. Basically, just I wasn't putting as much pressure and I wasn't bending it as much. And it actually felt quite OK. And my other knee sort of compensated. So I kept going one step at a time and um you know, then took breaks. So we got to a lovely flat part where we stopped, had a bit of lunch, recharged. Really important, isn't it? Um, again, a reminder to always important to recharge and take breaks when you need them, because I couldn't have done it if I hadn't done that. Um, so we did that and my knee was doing OK. I was listening. I was just, as I said, focusing on the next step. Literally, that's all I could do where I could you know, fall or trip up. And then what happened is we sort of split up a bit, you know, and I noticed that with a lot of people, I had walked some of the Camino de Santiago, that long uh, sort of pilgrimage or walk in Spain many years ago. And that's what used to happen during the day. We'd all be going in our own rhythm and speed. And there's also a time on things like this. I mentioned the great support of having someone there with me, but like everything in life, we need time to go inwards. We need time alone. We do all of this alone, ultimately, with the support of others. But, you know, we each have to go on. We each have a very unique journey and path and very unique skills and gifts and challenges along the way. Some were fitter on the mountain, some weren't. And I, I wasn't too bad, actually. So I continued on some of the rest of the journey on my own. But I wasn't really alone. There was people around me. I went inwards and I just really summoned my energy and said, look, God, if I meant to do this, I'm, I'm going to do it one step at a time. And so I really trusted on that in that inner guidance of my intuition and what I was being shown. And I could feel it so, so maybe the altitude as well. I just felt it was such a beautiful spiritual look place. I just felt so tuned in um, and tapped into that wisdom, which was wonderful. And then as we got further up, you know, we were meeting or I was meeting at that stage when I was on my own people coming down who had already been there. So they'd gone through the whole experience on their way back down. So encouraging, so supportive, smiling. And again, it reminded me in life, everything difficult I've been through, what's really helped me is people maybe who have been through the experience before me. And no one, you know, they couldn't tell me, you know, even if they tell me what it's like, I don't know until I experience. But what they can do is reassure me they can encourage me to trust myself, you know, that I have everything I need, the same as they did to go through it, to go at my own pace. You know, it isn't as bad as you might think. You know, I've been there. I can tell you, you can do it. So we will meet everyone like that. And I connected then again with Catherine. We sort of caught up with each other. 
which was lovely, met other people. So just the support, really important. That reminder, you know, of who you surround yourself in life is with is so, so important to how you come through and how you meet everything and every experience that you're going to have. Another interesting aspect to it as well was as we got further up, I noticed that there was an older man and he was sort of hanging behind me. He'd been through and climbed the mountain many times, he said. And he kept saying to me, you know, at the end, it was very steep now and I was running out of steam and you couldn't see around the bend. You were sort of going around the mountain. It was all just rocks and some of them were coming loose. And I tripped up the odd time. He didn't step in in any way or he didn't tell me what to do. He I just could feel him as a quiet, supportive presence that was there that, you know, I, I wasn't alone. And if I fell, he'd be there to help me up. That's the feeling I had. But he kept back and let me go through it myself. And isn't that also another reminder in life? We have to let each other make our own mistakes, make our own decisions, learn our own lessons. You know, I really think that's the most important thing. I particularly see it now in the world. You know, it's very easy for all of us to be telling each other, you know, I've tuned into my wisdom so I can tell you this is what you need to do. And that isn't the case that the true teacher doesn't do that. All we need, you know, can do is really just guide and let people find their own way into that wisdom and supporting them as they do, as they do that. So I know that sounds very, I'm not saying no, all of this was coming to me as I was climbing the mountain. Some of it was, but it's just interesting afterwards. That man really sticks out to me because he was just such a calm, quiet, supportive presence. And then I turned the corner and got to the top. And I noticed it's very interesting. Everybody really reached the top individually, even though they were in groups. Some people ran up on their own when they could see the finishing line. Others like myself scrambled up. And isn't that the case? Whatever we're doing in life, ultimately, it is a very personal journey that we, we have to make. There was just something in that each person getting to the top of the mountain individually. It was just spectacular. You know, the feelings that you get, you see things you I couldn't see from the ground. Isn't that the case with everything in life? You see things differently, having come through a challenge and an experience, you have a different perspective, a higher perspective. Yet when I was on the ground before I climbed the mountain, I wasn't like that. I was full of fear, you know, so many messages in that and so many gifts and lessons from that. And as I said, so important, I see was the people and the energy, the collective energy of everybody on that mountain and climbing that mountain. I didn't know what anyone else was going through, but we were in it together, definitely felt that. And the biggest really was just being in the moment, being in the moment, because and that's the one I will leave you with. Just being here now in the moment is all we have. And that is the only way that I was able to climb that mountain it was one step at a time, being present in the moment. And that is how we create and where we create from. And once I got into that feeling, I genuinely did. It's funny. As we went on, I had an image of myself at the top of the mountain. I really did. And, you know, looking out over the expanse and down at the scenery. And the more I stayed in that as I went step, you know, I still was going step by step, step by step. But I did hold that image of me and it did happen. And it was just amazing. I really hope you got something from listening to my little excursion last week up the mountain. Just be in the now and live your life moment to moment while always holding the highest perspective for your life possible and surround yourself with, with good people knowing when you need to be alone as well and, and go it alone. All of these lessons that I said I need to be reminded of, I wrote about them all in my book, which I've talked about before, Gifts from the Devastation. And as it nicely ties in, I'm just going to say this at the very end of the video. I'm offering currently a 20% discount on the audio book of my book, Gifts from the Devastation. And it's available to anyone who wishes to or is interested in signing up to my mailing list, which you can do by clicking on the link below. 
if you enjoyed my story and the lessons that I learned from climbing a mountain, please like and subscribe and comment. And I look forward to talking to you in the next video. Take care.